they do not have internet. This is, they've got crappy dialogue. This is, oh, I've got 768 and I can't watch Netflix. This is, I have nothing. And to a lot of us here, I think this is like not having indoor plumbing or uh, you know, other things that we need to stay alive. And so it, it seems hard to sort of think about. 35% of Americans are living without broadband. That's without anything faster than 768 in, in the house. And this was from 2009. You probably heard these statistics last year if you came here. And so I was like, well, of course, this is changing really rapidly, right? Like everybody's got broadband this year. We just didn't have it last year. Well, actually, um, and if you want to go to the list of links uh, on the thing, actually, uh, broadband adoption is slowing. So while we used to have 35% of people at home without broadband, now we've got 34%, year and a half, 1%. 22% uh, of Americans didn't have internet at home, now we've got 21%. This is not really the glorious future that I think a lot of us uh, were sort of expecting. And you know, to put this in sort of perspective, this is like, remember how when Gmail was saying, oh, we only lost 0.02% of our users' Gmail? And, and you're like, oh, that's nothing, right? And then you realize that's like 30,000 people. Mm -hmm. um, so if you've got 22% of Americans without broadband, that's 68 million people in this country who don't have uh, that at home. And it's, a, it's kind of a big deal. And one of the things that I'm here for is to remember that those people exist and maybe find some ways to sort of help them uh, with that. Last year, we talked a little bit about how libraries have kind of this unfunded mandate to instruct these people. This year, we're going to be looking at policy and uh, the sort of unsexy world of legislation and, okay. um, and, and why, this, uh, why this sort of came to be. One of the things that was really weird about the Pew Internet Report where we found out that broadband adoption is slowing is that of the non-users, that 22%, um, one in 10 of them are planning on using the internet in the future. <laughs> Seriously, like not the other 90% of that 22% are like, I don't care, who cares, the internet or what? cares. And so we're not just having a problem getting broadband to these people, though we also have that problem. We're having a problem explaining to them sort of why uh, why they would care. So in the last year, I've been working on writing a book called Without a Net, Librarians Bridging the Digital Divide, talking about libraries teaching people how to use computers. And you know, the big deal was just teaching isn't solving the problem. Libraries are taking this on. You can now get Broadband internet, 99.7% of America's libraries, and that's not solving the problem. Kind of frustrating. And I was like, what's up with that? I know what's going on in Vermont, not really the rest of the country, so I brought these folks in. I'll briefly introduce them and then finish up what I'm going to say, and then they're going to talk. Uh, this is Fiona Morgan at the end. Uh, Fiona's getting her master's in public policy at Duke University Stanford School. Before that, she was a reporter covering the local tech and politics in North Carolina. <laughs> Uh, her column, The Monitor, in the North Carolina Triangle area, The Independent, looks at local media and technology issues, particularly concerning how legislation affects access, which is what I was really interested in. And uh, she's the author of a case study about uh, North Carolina Triangle's information ecology for the New America Foundation, which sounds really scary, but they do a lot of really good work. Uh, this is uh, Justin Grimes. Justin is a PhD candidate at the University of Maryland's I School. He's an IT policy wonk and open data access advocate. He thinks a lot about the ethics of online and virtual worlds and what happens when we keep too much in the cloud. Now, the cloud is only real to people who have broadband access to the internet, let's, uh, let's remember. Uh, he's currently working as a research assistant at the Information Policy and Access Center, where he's helping conduct the Public Library Funding and Technology Access Study, uh, which is a multi-year study of technology and connectivity in public libraries. And if you're like me, this is like the thing you read to figure out what's going and uh, his dissertation, uh, if finished, Justin wrote this himself, uh, looks at how local municipalities are implementing open government data initiatives. So that's kind of what he's looking at. I'm really psyched that they're both here to talk about their specialty areas. Uh, so what we're talking about, and I like to talk about the Rural Electrification Program because I feel like that's one instance in which government mandated that we have to fix this problem. And sure enough, we actually did, though it took a really long time and it made a lot of people uh, fairly unhappy. But uh, where I live in Vermont, and I'll show you a little And I still hear where I live, you know, the born with the chip thing, the born digital, isn't this all going to change when older people drop dead and younger people <laughs> replace them? And number one, that's unkind. And, <laughs> and, and number two, it's not actually really true. We're not raising tech literate teenagers where I live because they don't have cell phones and we don't have broadband. The born with the chip thing is an awesome idea and I like it. 
but it's a it's a class and privilege issue. It's not um, it's not ubiquitous. You're not born with a chip just because you're a kid. You're born with a chip because you live somewhere that has access to the internet. So, um, oops. Uh, I was really lucky that we got to give this talk. We said we pitched this talk, and then the national broadband map came out. Awesome, right? Has anybody looked up their neighborhood on the broadband map? Are you thrilled that you have like 1,000 gigabyte internet coming straight to your home that you can just get? This is where I live in Randolph, and it tells me that Sovereign Act Communications uh, offers me a 25 to 50 megabit connection. And that is awesome, right? Like, what am I even doing here talking to you guys? I should just be home watching movies all day long. But it's actually, it's actually not true. Um, and you know, I'm a good librarian, so I sort of looked this up. The broadband map does the best job it can with the data it gets from the people who give it the data. The people who give the broadband map the data are the providers who want to, in many cases, sell you something. Again, it's great, right? And there's a whole checking system, and I don't mean to be like, this is all bullshit, but at some level, these numbers aren't true for where I live, and they may not be true for where you live, and what they're trying to do is portray an America that's much more wired than is, right? So you look at the national broadband map, hey, everyone's everyone's online, this is great, shut up, I don't know what your problem is, etc. So, uh, you know, I just signed up for broadband uh, like last week, right? And so I actually know that the fastest broadband I can get at my house, and I live on the main street, is 1.5 megabit, which whatever, it's fine, I'll be fine. But this 20 megabit, like, I don't know what that is, I don't know where that's from, or who's, that's not real. Like, maybe they offer it to businesses who pay, you know, a thousand bucks a month for that. Like, I don't, I don't have any idea. I don't know who's getting that. And so, you know, in our state, the um, the era funding, you know, the government, we call it Obama money, but that, I think maybe that's also unkind. But I mean, <laughs> the money from the government mostly went to beef up the internet we already have. So schools and libraries got more internet. Terrific. But um, uh, Farmer Bob, who people complained last year that I used Farmer Bob as an example because farmers actually are much more wired than many other people in our rural communities. But I'm using him anyhow. Farmer Bob still can't um, you know, get online at all from his home. And that's sort of what we're talking about. So one more slide. When you're looking at who else is trying to sell you what kind of story, this is recovery.vermont.gov. This is the website that we made to ask the federal government to give us money, and it tells a very different story. Now, basically, I can just sort of tell you in a nutshell, White means nobody lives there. Tan means uh, 10 to 0 to 10 percent broadband adoption. Tan, darker tan means 10 to 30. Black means almost 100 percent. So let's just scroll through Vermont very leisurely, and then I'm going to pass this on. That little circle, that's where I live. I live on the little black.